last week, and uh, I'm going to ask you guys for permission to be a little weak right now, which is something I hate to do, and I don't do it often. And then something I like to do is I want to get a little intense. So do I, do I have everyone permission to yeah. Yeah. go to that class for, yeah. for eight minutes? Okay. So this quote by Abraham Lincoln that I really like says, uh, only the test of the fire makes pure steel. And uh, I really like that quote. It, it hits home from, from my times back in college, playing, playing college soccer, especially with my, with my co-captain senior year, Emilio. Um, we used to always say that to each other. We'd be in the huddle before the game, senior year, and uh, we'd get done with the huddle, and right before the whistle blew for the game, we'd just come up, get a little pound, say it one more time through the fire, my friend. <laughs> and we'd say that before every game, senior year. <laughs> now, why, why did we say that? Why did we like that? It was more than just the Abe Lincoln I started, started freshman year, freshman year in college. I was entering a, a nationally recognized soccer program, and uh, I had aspirations to win, to win a national championship. Uh, this program had, had won a national championship, and they'd gone to the Final Four, so standards were pretty high. It's a really close-knit group. The alumni network, as well, is always constantly watching the feed to see how we're doing. And, uh, the path was pretty rocky when I started out freshman year. <coughs> we started losing games. And uh, if you look to the seniors, they're not used to losing games. They're used to making a run for the national tournament. So they were looking to us, the freshmen, and we didn't know what to do. We thought we were just part of a program that would just win. But it wasn't happening. And this was, uh, this was part of that test of the fire. You know, if anyone's been on a, a competitive sports team and seen what happens once those wins aren't coming, you start working harder and harder and harder, and we kept losing and losing. Two hour practices turned into four hour practices. We weren't touching the ball as much, we'd be in the woods doing hill training a little bit more than we, than we were used to. It felt like preseason all over again during the season. Because we were losing, we weren't getting it done. And uh, there's this one senior, he's an All American, he's in, in my position, and he basically, <laughs> I was trying to take his spot, but he was kind of a hero of mine. During that time, he just looked at me over, you know, after this one loss, it was to Cortland away. I remember in the locker room, and he just looked at me, and he's like, Brian, I don't know what to do to, to win, to get this program back on track. I'm out of ideas. You know, everyone was working hard, everyone was determined, doing all the things that you thought would get you a win, but it wasn't happening. So what do you do when you have a passion in your life that you care more about than anything you've ever experienced, you do anything to achieve that, and you fail time and time again. What do you do? That hurts. And I think for a lot of us on this path that we're at with chiropractic, you know, if, to really get to the spot where you want to be at, to really start fulfilling your vision, you gotta get knocked down and start failing. And uh, I'm the source of sore losers. I'm a competitive, Frick. <laughs> and it kills me to fail early on right now. It kills me every single day, but what do you do? You have to go to those past experiences that made you. You know, so freshman year finished, and uh, my buddy Millie and I, we were just, you know, we took it personally. We were like personally offended. How, how are we letting this program drop from the standard that they set? You know, what are we doing wrong? And uh, all we could come up with was to train harder in the off season. You know, anyone that knows sports, once again, in this season, that's the fun time, man. Your work is done or your work wasn't done. It's the off season that makes you. So for those four years of college, I went through exponential personal growth. That wasn't the goal, it was just to get the program back where it needed to be. But those trials and tribulations that you have to go to to get to that point, that teaches you something that's, that's priceless. You can take that with you for the rest of your life. I, I take that with me here with chiropractic when I want to give up, when I'm frustrated, when I'm sick of studying, I go back to those experiences. And the two things I can take away is resilience and work ethic. It's not about talent. I don't have any chiropractic talents, but I've got resiliency and work ethic. And sometimes it's gonna be rocky and ugly, but it's gonna get me out of that gutter that I'm in right now, where I feel like I'm not making the progress to fulfill my vision. And it was the same way with soccer. You know, we had to go back to those core values. 
we weren't getting it done. We were working as hard as we possibly could, but we were still in the gutter. How do we get out of that, out of that gutter to get the program where it needs to be? And that was that off-season training, you know, going to the gym, being scared of the workouts, being scared to death because I knew the guy next to me was going to push me to a level that I hadn't been that I hadn't been at yet. To me, that's personal growth. And it was that, and then it was constantly connecting ourselves to that vision. For us, it was to play professionally when we got out of school. It was to win a national championship, which we didn't succeed at. But it took us on a beautiful path of personal improvement. And it's the same thing with chiropractic. You know, every day, I have to con connect myself back to that vision. And if I don't, then I'm ready to give up on myself. Because I'll give up on myself, no problem. I have no problem doing that. But if I connect myself to that vision and some of the people that are part of that vision, hell no. I can't do it. I can't stomach it. I think of my best friend Zach back home. He's been an addict for, for 10 years now. Uh, he usually goes for about four month periods now of sobriety. And uh, he always seems like he's doing pretty well, but something's missing, you know? And then he'll relapse. And I'll get that phone call, or when I was home, I'll talk to him face to face. And to me, that's connected to that vision. You know, I, I can look myself in the mirror and be okay with quitting, but thinking about him and thinking about, you know, those thoughts that are going through his head, is he just wasting his time with hope? For the past five years, I've had to lie to him and tell him, no, he's not. I had to lie to him because I, I don't know what to do. Uh, I don't know what his options are. He's tried every program, every A meeting, sponsor, you name it. It's not working. It's not working, but maybe I can help. Maybe I can help. And maybe one day I can have that conversation with him. That's going to get that lifeless look out of his face, that defeated look, and really mean it this time when I tell him that he's going to get out of that gutter. Because for a while, I think I was lying to him, I'm lying to myself. That's what's going to drive me, is that vision, constantly connecting yourself back to that. How much time do One minute. One minute. So the test of the fire. You know, it wasn't until that senior year that we really took ownership over that, over our program. And it was because of all those trials and tribulations. You know, destroying ourselves in the gym. You know, people writing us off constantly, not being nationally ranked, not being to that spot, but we stuck to that vision. And so when it came to senior year, when we came in, I gotta interrupt you again. We gave that pound one more time to the fire, my friend. We really meant that. And because we went through all those experiences, once that whistle blew, for 90 minutes of that game, I felt invincible. I felt like, bring it on. Whatever you have to throw at me in that game, bring it on. And I know that's what I have to do right now in chiropractic, or I'm screwed. Or someone's gonna knock me off that foundation that I'm setting for myself. There's no other option. 